Okay, I'm starting the live stream now before I open up. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to our No BS webinar on how to invest. Thank you so much to everyone that has been waiting in the waiting room for a minute. Um, so just say hi to me in the chat box, tell me where you're calling in from. My name is Fumilola and I'm a senior content associate at Shilid Africa. I'm so excited to get into this webinar with you today. Let me know where you're calling in from. Hi, Chinere. Um, Chinere is calling in from Onisha. Thank you so much for joining in. Hi. I can see Kede. Sorry if I got your name wrong. I'm calling in from Calabar. Hi. Victoria from Portacot. Mazapa, calling me from Lagos, Emanuela, hi, Zelda, Toby, thank you so much everyone for joining in. Now while we're, we'll be waiting for more people to join us, but while we are waiting, uh, I just want to give a brief overview of what to expect in today's class. Now you're on to safe space. It's a webinar on how to invest. So today we'll be covering, you know, just the basic things you need to know about how to invest. We'll be covering how to design and execute an investment plan. You know, what to look out for when you're building your investment portfolio, evaluating your financial situation, compound interest, and busting myths about investing. So just keep saying hello in the chat box. Um, we're waiting for a few people to join in. In about three minutes, we'll start the webinar properly. Okay, hi, Sandra from Nairobi. Oh, Lisa from Burundi, hi. Um, Elizabeth from Anambra. Hi, Elizabeth, nice to have you. Somto from Atlanta. 
Thank you for calling in. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Tolani as well. Okay. Thank you so much for joining in, everyone. Okay, we have more people joining in. While we're waiting for everyone to join in, I will just go over, um, we'll be going over Tolu Lokbaya Faboyede's bio. Um, Tolu is the person that's going to be heading this investment class. She's going to be teaching you all the things I mentioned earlier on in the class. Um, Tolu, please could you just unmute your mic and say hello? Hello, everyone. Thanks for me. I'm excited to be here as well. We're excited to have you here. Um, so let me just quickly go over um, Tolu's bio. Okay. Okay, Tolu Lokwe is a business development and wealth management expert at FSDH Asset Management. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Economics from the University of Lagos and has completed a CFA Institute Investment Foundations program. She has over 12 years of experience in the Nigerian financial markets and has attended to various professional courses and training in portfolio and wealth management. She has worked with several individuals and companies to grow their wealth. She is passionate about providing financial literacy to both individuals and corporate organizations. Okay, so we're so glad to have you, Kofo. Um, you can turn your video on now in a couple of, we just want to wait for one more minute to have people join in. Hi, Ore. Hi, Celestina. Hi, Rashidat. Hi, Mary. It's great to have everyone here. We're super excited to have you join us. Okay, so for the last minute of our introductions, please tell us in the chat section what you would like to learn from today's class. What are you hoping to get at the end of the class? What are you hoping to take away? Just let me know. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Mary. Hi, Tolu, are you there? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Okay, Esther said, I would love to learn how to take charge of my finances. I want to invest like a pro to awesome, yeah, in the right place. Anybody else want to share in the comment section what you're hoping to take away from this class? Okay, someone here says I'd love to learn short and long-term investment options. Yes, you'll see that here. Um, I'd like to know how to have several streams of income. Hmm. All right, uh, Kofo, are you there? Can we start now? Oh, okay, yes. Hi, so you, okay, so you can start now. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay, this says I'm just about to start my first job. I want to start my Okay, good. All right, so let's get into our slides for today. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no one telling me the finance that is what I'm standing. Okay, hello everyone once again. My name is Tolu Lokbe Faboyede. And um, I trust we're all keeping safe. So I'd like to start by telling a short story about myself, my first experience with investment. When I was in the university, a cousin of mine was um, a banker at the time, and he persuaded me to invest in, into buying some shares of his uh, bank. 
at the time I was just a student. So how much could I possibly have had, right? So I gave him all the excuses I could think of. Like, um, I don't have enough money. I'm sure so many of you can relate. As a student, when someone says, come and invest, how much would you have to invest? So I told him, look, I don't like filling forms to start with. I, I don't have enough money. I'm still collecting money from my uncles and my aunties, my parents. So I don't have enough money. But he kept at it. And finally, I gave in. I invested some little funds, right? Now, to me, I was doing him a favor. Honestly, I was helping him to, I thought I was helping him to just meet his target. I didn't know that I was also investing for my future. Now, fast forward to when I was getting married and I started working with FSDH at the time. So I remembered my little investment and decided to just, okay, check up on the investment and see what it's doing. To my surprise, it had multiplied beyond what I'd I could have ever imagined. So of course I sold about 80% of it and that was my contribution towards my wedding. And I felt really good with myself. My first investment, it went so, so well. So the, the basic point I like to tell anyone that is starting to invest is number one, you're not too, you're not too young to start investing. I was below 20 years when I started. And now we have parents that come to FSDH and they start investing for their children, right? And they start from as early as when the child is, even before the child clocks one, they start investing for their children. So automatically the child becomes an investor. So you're not too young to start investing, start from where you are right now. And you don't have to wait to have a lot of funds before you can start investing. Start with what you have. I was, like I said, I was a student. I was getting money from my uncles and my aunts and maybe a little side or so, but it was, for me, it wasn't a lot of money. So I thought, okay, I have to wait to start working to get a lot of money before I could invest. But with that little amount of money that I put aside, it was able to bail me out in the future. And investment is not only for experts, financial experts. I didn't have to know a lot of terminologies. I didn't have to know a lot of calculations. I just knew the basics, right? So it was just, okay, how would this be beneficial to me? And he explained it. I said, okay, let me give it a try. And I did. So you really don't have to know all the technical, all the technical jargons that we talk about, you know, all the compound interest and all that. You don't have to know how to calculate all those things, but just know why and understand what it is. Once you have all that at the back of your mind, then you should be able to invest. And as long as you have a goal, all of us have a goal, I'm sure, be it long-term goal or short-term goal, whatever your goal is, maybe is to buy a nice ride. We've been on lockdown since, so maybe you want to go on vacation, you want to buy a house, whatever that goal is. Trust me, one of the key strategies to achieving your goal is to be investing. And with investment, you are, and, and you invest the right way, right? It's very important, investing the right way. So with investing, you will be on your way to having that financial freedom, that financial security that we all aim to achieve in the future. So it's very important that you have a goal. And now that we know this, we have at the back of our mind that I'm not too young to start investing. I can invest with what I have. I don't have to be a financial expert. So what really is investment? I know we can Google it and see what investment is. So let's look at what investment is and what investment is not. I'll just pick out the silly words here for me. The words that stand out. Investment is putting money aside to purchase assets with the goal that those assets will generate income for you in the future. So put money aside and purchase assets. Those are the action words. Now you have to also have at the back of your mind that that asset that you have purchased will be able to generate income returns in the future. Now your return could be um, capital appreciation or income generation. Now capital gains is basically Maybe you buy a plot of land, two, three million naira, and you're selling it in the next four, five years 
and it's now what you now sell for maybe 10 million naira. So that means that your 2 million naira has appreciated 10 million naira. So the 8 million naira is a capital appreciation. While the income generation is your maybe your rental income, right? That's your income generation. So, and you have investment that can actually either give you one of the two or both. So simply put, investment is about letting your money work for you. Investment is about growing that money. Now, investment is not a Ponzi scheme. You don't put your money in a Ponzi scheme and you say you have invested. When organizations tell you, bring your 5,000 Naira, you will, when you invest it, you will get 50,000 Naira. Mm -mm, that is not investment. You have just gambled with your money. So don't call that investment, that's gambling. When something is too good to be true, trust me, it's truly too good to be true. And investment is also not the same thing as savings. I know they use that word interchangeably. Some people say savings instead of investment, investment instead of savings, but it's not the same thing as savings. Savings is when you put money aside for emergency uses. You want to touch it anytime. And remember our definition of um, investment. You have to leave it for the future. But savings, you want to be able to access it anytime and uh, for emergency uses, right? And the interest may not be so much. In fact, most times the interest is not so much on savings. So now that we understand what investment is and what investment is not, how do we go about this investment? What, how do we know what to invest in? Before I go to the steps about um, investing, there's this lovely video I saw online I would love to share with us. I'm sure we'll enjoy it. And uh, we're going to discuss it after. Enjoy it, please. Hello? Hello, Tolu. Um, I currently can't see your video. Could you please try sharing your screen again? Oh, okay. You can't see the screen. No, 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 I can't. All right. I can show it again. Okay. Okay. okay, I still can't see your um your slides. So what's going to happen? Could you just continue with the presentation while Let's I try to get some? Um, Okay. Uh, Is it working? See. Yes, let's hope so. A few minutes. If it doesn't come up, I'll just go. I'll just continue. Okay. Okay, so I don't think it's working. Okay. Okay, please just turn on your video and continue with the um, presentation while we try to figure out what is going on. Okay, let's let me do the last try. And, um, 
Okay. I can see now. Okay, okay so if it's just into a present mode. Okay, thank okay. you. Sorry, guys. Sorry, everyone. All right, so I'll start on was really heartbreaking I must say. I mean the little boy had deprived himself of so many things and uh, yet he didn't get what he wanted right. That was really really heartbreaking. I felt for the little boy but there were some things that the boy did right and there were some things that he did wrong and that's why it's important to have a very good plan in place when um, talking about investment. And that's what we'll be looking at. And we'll also be looking at what the boy had done right and what he had done wrong. Okay, so um, in looking at investments, like I mentioned, investments is not the same thing as savings. In looking, and someone mentioned when we're starting that you would like to know, um, like to invest in a professional way, like to invest like the millionaires. Okay, so we'll look at that now. Kofo, sorry, for some reason, my, my screen isn't moving. Okay. Um, it's right. mostly a network issue. Okay. okay, okay, all right. Good, all right. So the very first step is to assess your situation. Evaluate your financial position. Where are you currently? What do you have? How much you have to invest? And to determine that is simply your looking at your take home pay and um, after you've taken up your expenses and all that, what is left for you. So you should apply what you call the budgeting rule, right? Someone said, I want to invest like the millionaires. The millionaires actually use what you call budgeting rule. Now the budgeting rule, you don't have to follow it uh, to the letter. It just says that you invest a portion in your needs, your wants and investments. 
I don't want to use the word savings, your needs, your wants and investment. And your needs here are the most important thing. Those are your necessities. So you want to pay for house rent. You want to go for, um, you want to pay for house rent. You want to go to work. So you need to transport yourself. You will need to buy fuel into your car. Those are your necessities. You need food to eat. Those are your, necess your necessities. So you apportion some to your necessities. Then your wants. The little boy deprived himself. He, found, he couldn't, he wanted ice cream, right? He wanted to play games, but he didn't. He, he was just putting everything. He was just saving up everything. Every little cover he had, he was just saving it. So you don't have to punish yourself. I don't believe you should punish yourself so hard, right? But you need to be able to know, okay, how much would I need to put in my necessities? How much should I allocate to my wants? And how much should I allocate to my investments? Now, like I said, you don't have to follow it to the letter. It doesn't have to be 50% of the entire thing you earn. For some people, they still live with their parents. They may not be having all those expenses. So you may have a lot to invest. In fact, that gives you more room to invest, right? And once you have been able to ascertain, okay, so this is how much I have. You've, you've used your budgeting rule and you've determined how much you have. The next thing is to have your goal. Your goals could be long or short term, right? Now, for instance, you, you want to be a professional photographer, for instance. You know that in the short term, you need to buy a camera, right? And so all these things you have to write down. And it's very important to achieve any goal. It's important to write it down. And when you write it down, you can actually stick it around your, what I do, I stick it around my bedside. I put some on my refrigerator. So it reminds me of, okay, this is where I want to go to. This is where I want to go to. So it's very important to write down those goals. You always, and you, once, once, you, once you write them down, it reminds you each time that, you haven't achieved this. You haven't achieved this. I don't know if many of us can relate with that. And your goals have to be very, your goals have to be smart. Now, smart here means number one, specific. Remember we, we, uh, the example I gave, you want to buy a camera. The camera is a specific thing you want to achieve, right? So your goal has to be specific. Like some people say, oh, when I'm 40, I want to be in Forbes. Or when I'm 35, I want to be in Forbes. How do you want to get to the Forbes? What is the pattern to get to the, what's your roadmap to get into the Forbes? So you want to be a photographer. You just don't sit in your house. You need a camera. You need to go for professional classes to be a professional, you know, photographer. So you need to have a roadmap, right? So your goals have to be specific. So your specific thing you want to get here in the short term is a camera. Now it has to be measurable. What's the price of this camera? Let's say, for instance, is 500,000 naira. So it has to be measurable and it has to be achievable and realistic. Now, being realistic, for instance, like I said, assuming it's 300,000 naira and you now decide to be putting 5,000 naira every month, you want to be putting that aside to purchase the camera and you are giving yourself, say, okay, the timeline to buy this camera is one year. And you start putting 5,000 Naira every month. Now, 5,000 times 12 is 60,000 Naira. One year, you probably will not achieve it. So let's be realistic. I know it's good to dream big. Yes, dream big, but please be very realistic, right? So you have to be realistic with that, your goal. And it has to have a timeline. You have to put a timeline in place. Remember uh, Parkinson's law of time. It says that work expands to fill the time you have allotted to it. My, my eight-year-old, when he's eating and he's taking all the time, I tell him, eat your food. If you don't finish in like 20 minutes, you won't go out with me. And you see the boy, he finished in less than 20 minutes. So if you don't put a time to it, you probably will just be there and you know, okay, I'm going to make it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you never achieve it. So it's good to put a time frame to whatever you want to achieve. By so, so and so time, I should have been here. So if I'm saving or I'm investing to get 300000 at the end of the year, by June, at least I should have about one fifty. At least that's half, right? I should have at least one fifty in my investment account. Now, once you have your goals, then you need to now get 
a, a very good financial advisor. Trust me, not all financial advices are good. Not all advices are good. So you have to be able to get a professional financial advisor that will put you on track. Now, how do you recognize a good professional advisor? Their track record, very, very important. They have to have a good track record. You should be able to compare them with their competitors, right? So for instance, um, your child comes back from school and comes back with a result of 82%, right? And you're jubilated, oh yeah, this is A. And you look at the class average and the class average is like 90%. Hmm. Yes, the child did 80%, but he could have done better because the class average is 90%. Right. So you need to look at the track record of that uh, financial advisor that you're going with. And integrity is also very key. Sometimes I know that some 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 advisors just want to sell products. So they just tell you things. So they just they want to shove their products down your throat. But for <laughs> let me give this example. You go to an open market and you know clearly that this uh, dress they are showing you is not your size. I mean, I'm a size 14, I'm a size 12, and you're showing me a, a, a dress of a size six, and you want me to buy it, hey. So you have to also consider that, right? So in look, choosing your financial advisor, you have to put the track record into consideration. What have they done in the past? How good are they? Are they okay, they just started a new product. Uh, is that new product what you actually need? All this you need to put into consideration. And once you have selected your financial advisor, both of you will design a plan that will help you meet that need. Now, like I said, the financial market is very, very broad. There are different um, investment options in the financial market. And it's always, most times, a daunting tax for new investors to be able to navigate through the financial markets. That's why it's good to talk to a professional. Now, the professional is going to like profile you, check your, look at your age, your risk appetite, and how much you have and what your goals are so that they'll be able to design what to put in that portfolio of yours. Now, imagine a child of like five year old and a man of like 45 year old, they go to the hospital. It's not the same medication they'll probably prescribe for the two of them. So the same thing applies to financial um, investments. The investment options that a, a five-year-old or a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old will have will be different from what a 65-year-old will probably put in their own portfolio. So all these things are very important. And the risk and reward, the higher the risk, the higher the potential return. Please take note of that word, potential. Does not mean that it is guaranteed, it's just potential, right? So the higher the risk, an investor is willing to take, the higher the potential returns they will be, they may have. And the lower the risk, of course, the lower the return, the potential will they, they, they would have. So in putting those uh, assets into your portfolio, you also need to look at the proportion at which you're putting the assets in your, in your portfolio because diversification is very key. You're diversifying, not even only in terms of the investment options. You know, you can put your equities, fixed income, um, um, fixed income uh, instrument like treasury bills, you know, and bonds and all, but in what proportion are you putting them? And two, even if you put all that in your portfolio, you also need to look at in terms of currency. Imagine you having only Naira in your portfolio right now, right? But having like two different currencies, you have your Naira in your portfolio, you have USD in your portfolio. Like for, I, I remember one of my, um, my bosses, she's been investing for her children. She does like 10,000 Naira every month. And last, two years, she just decided, okay, it's time to, I mean, that money has grown now. Let me start, let me convert some, let me diversify into uh, a foreign currency. And she was surprised she was able to do $10,000 per child. Now the child, the children are so happy. They have both Naira investments she, and uh, USD investment in their portfolio, right? So she's been able to secure their future. That's the financial security we are all talking about. So it's not just about you putting um, those assets in your portfolio. At what, what proportion are you putting them? 
you may want to look at, okay, is it 50% in bond? Is it 20% in bond? And for those that don't have a lot of funds, right? They don't have much to invest right now. Trust me, like I said, you can start with what you have. And that's the beauty about mutual funds. Mutual funds will help you. In fact, with mutual funds, we always joke that, look, you are just, you have just employed the services of a professional financial advisor because um, mutual funds, they would carefully select those um, assets into the portfolio and your financial advisor will let you know, okay, this is an equity-based uh, mutual fund, this is a fixed income-based mutual fund. Whichever mutual fund that they think would meet your need is what they would advise you to invest in. So with a minimum of 5,000 naira, you can have a diversified portfolio. Really, you can. You don't have to have, you know, millions in your accounts before you start to have, before you have a diversified portfolio. With mutual funds, it can enable you have uh, a diversified portfolio. And in FSDH, we have uh, mutual funds. We have mutual funds with different asset uh, classes. Whatever your risk appetite is, whatever your profile is, we have products that would meet your need. And once you speak with any of our financial advisors, they will be able to, um, understand. once they understand your profile, they'll be able to advise you on which of the products, which of the mutual funds you can invest in. And if it's to invest directly in any of the assets, in any of the investment instruments, they would also be advising you to do that. Now that you have selected the investment options that should be in your portfolio. Like seriously, some people say, okay, I want to invest. So should I be buying these shares now? Should I be buying that shares now? I know that yes, um, like I said, higher return potential, um, you, you, there's high possibility for high ret um, returns, high risk potential uh, possibility for high returns, but you don't just want to join the bad wagon because, oh, someone invested in the particular stock today and the, it has gone up and you just want to jump on it and go up. What if when, it ha when you jump on it, it starts going down? So you need the expertise of a financial advisor, no matter how good that stock is, right? To be able to tell you, guide you on when to, to start. And everybody wants to buy the, the stock with the shares when the prices are low, right? But you also need, you need the, uh, the expertise of a financial advisor to advise you to do that. Just don't follow the bandwagon. Say, okay, everybody is investing in, in the stock market. I also want to invest in the stock market. You need to know, okay, which stocks? Why am I investing? right? There are some stocks that are called dividend stocks. They always pay dividend. And some people invest for capital appreciation, right? So you need to know why you are investing. That's why your financial advisor has to understand all these things before they can advise you on the products to choose. And the next thing is, now that you have joined the plan, action, 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 put it into action. Many of us procrastinate, right? At the beginning of the year, you say, oh, before the first quarter, I want to lose weight. I want to lose like 10 kg, right? You put all that together. You say, okay, I'll stop eating granola. I'll stop eating fatty foods. I'll stop this. But <laughs> most of us just never keep to it. So, but you have to discipline yourself. Remember that little boy, he disciplined himself. In fact, I think he overdid it actually. He disciplined himself to be able to be in, to be able to put money aside. And he was putting it aside. Another thing is he was putting it aside regularly. So investment should be an habit, right? It should be a habit that you have to cultivate. You should be, you should cultivate that habit of investing. It should be your lifestyle. Remember that budgeting rule. So it should be a lifestyle that you grow with, right? And you'll be surprised at the, the power of compounding interest. Like Albert Einstein said, that is the eighth wonder of the world, compounding interest. I put heads to scenarios. So imagine you start working. Someone said, um, someone just put in the comment section that, I mean, I just started working and I want to know how I can start investing. Trust me, this is a scenario that, Imagine you start investing 20,000 Naira, right? From when you start investing your first salary, you put 20,000 Naira aside and you're consistently investing on a regular basis, maybe every month. In the next 20 years, imagine this person is 20 years old. In the next 20 years, the person will have about 14.6 million Naira. And we all know that 20,000 Naira now, 
what would you be able to do with it? It would be nice to see comments in the chat session, what you can do with your 20,000 Naira now, you know? Can you buy a very good extension, you know, the shoes? How much would you, how much would you be able to buy very good shoes, leather quality shoes, bags? But imagine you putting that money aside. Remember when I said, when I was in school, I thought that money was just too small. I mean, how could I be investing that kind of money? What's interest, what's interest, what return can it possibly earn me? But if you're diligent enough, to be putting it aside every month. And here I've put an average interest rate of 10%. In Nigeria, we have seen interest rates um, go as low as 1% and as high as about 20%. So I've put an average of 10% here just to play with figures. So if you had diligent enough to be investing your 20,000 Naira every single month, and you invest it for a total of 20 years, you would have invested 4.8 million naira. That money, you probably would have spent it on, you know, pizza, shawarma, you know, just go out in nice outing with your friends. But if you're diligent enough to put it together, you'd have invested 4.8 million naira. And the interest that would have accumulated on it, compounding interest, 9.8 million naira to give you a total of 14.6, extended by another five years that would be 25 million naira. Now you see that many people are still working in their companies, not because, and they're still working for other people, not because they want to, but they know if they resign, they don't have any backup. They don't know where to get the next meal from. So they don't enjoy what they're doing, but they just don't want to leave because they don't have any, they don't have any fallback money on. And you, some people have been working for like 20, 25 years. They don't have fallback money. They, all they keep saying is the money is not enough. The money that's not even enough to, for me to fend for my family. You want me to take out of it and invest? Like I said, remember Parkinson's law. You can also put that into investment because your expenses will what? Keep increasing to meet your income. So that's why you have to stick by that budgeting rule, right? You have to stick by that budget. In fact, let's look at the, the Big Brother Niger show going on right now. The winner comes out with how much? A uh, uh, total package of about 85 million naira. That person's lifestyle is going to change. You know, the things that he used to do before, some of the things that he used to do before or she used to do before may not be able to do again. The places, you know, yeah, the lifestyle will change. So your expenses will grow to meet your income. You don't wait till you have a lot. You don't say you have to wait till you have a lot of money. Like I was saying, oh, no, I'll start when I start working. No, start with what you have. As long as you earn, if you're doing side also and you make some money, take a percentage of it out and, you know, invest it. That means you're securing your future. That's your, you're working your way towards financial freedom in the future. And, the, and lastly is to monitor your investment. There's hardly ever any investment house now that you wouldn't be given online access to monitor your investment. And uh, remember I talked about the, the example we gave that someone wants to buy a camera, you have um, 300, your target is to have 300,000. So you should be able to monitor it. The first quarter, the first month, the second month, the third month, okay, how have I done? How have I fared? Is there a need for me to increase my investment? Is there a need for me to uh, look at my, the selection my investment option selection maybe i need to tweak it a bit and all that so what could you what could you have done what can you do better rather what can you do better to improve if you're not close to the uh to the goal post what can you do better go back to the drawing board speak with your financial advisor okay let's see what can i do this is my target how do i meet it i'm still far behind okay so the financial advisor can say, okay, you know what, maybe you need to look at your expenses, let's cut it down, let's see what we can tweak there, here and there, you know. So once you are able to review your portfolio and refine it, you monitor it as you go, you will be on your way to, to, to meeting that goal that you have set for yourself. So those are just the simple steps that I would love, that I'd love to, um, to explain today. And really, your financial freedom, your financial security is in your hands, is in nobody's hands. It's not in the government's hands. It's not in your sister, your brother, your village people. You can create the future you want for yourself. You can start it today.
Create the future you want for yourself. Create the future you want for your children. And kids, let's stop the habit of, oh, my children, I want to invest in my children's future so that they can, they can take care of me when I'm old. Your children shouldn't be your retirement plan. They have their own lives, right? So you invest in your future. Create that future you want to see today. Thank you very much. And uh, I see so many comments and questions. So I think uh, it's, it's okay to start taking comments and questions now. Hello, Tolu, thank you so much. Uh, so we'll just jump into the questions. Thank you so much. I'm sure everyone could get a thing or two about investing from Tony's presentation. I enjoyed it. I hope everyone enjoyed it as well. Um, so we're going to the comments section. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay, so. Cindy wants to know what options there are for new investors. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Cindy, for that question. The truth is, yes, um, I could tell you invest in this, invest in that. But like I said, I wouldn't just want to throw products at you. So it will be good to understand your profile right like i said we need to understand what you want to invest towards what you want to achieve how long do you have to achieve that goal and um how much do you want to be putting aside to achieve that goal so i'm not just going to tell you oh go and buy shares or um go and buy fixed income securities your age is important for me to do like a profile right and like i said what i would what i would uh tell a 15 year old will be different from what I'll tell a 45 year old to invest in. So Cindy, you can reach out to me um, after you can, I mean, let me put up my, our contact details, our financial advisor, any of our financial advisors will be very glad to work with you to achieve your, your goal. Um, okay, thank you for that, Tulu. Okay, so um, Somto wants to know if she can get if how she can get a financial advisor and how much it costs to get one. Financial advisor. Okay, so I don't know if we have okay, financial advisor. she's in the advisor. US, by the way. Oh yeah, I mean we're in a global community, right? So you can send us email, you can reach, we're very social we're on Instagram, Facebook. So you can reach out to us and send us emails and we'll be very quick to respond and we'll be very happy to work with you. And like I said, um, FSD has financial advisors and really it comes at no cost. So don't worry, don't, don't like I mentioned with 5,000 Naira, you can, you know, um, employ the services of a financial advisor by investing through a mutual fund so you don't have to break the bank. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, E asked how local inflation affects investments. Hmm. Okay, inflation is simply the, the increase in prices of goods and services. So clearly it affects investment. And that's why I've also played the video of that little boy. The price was 
how much? 2,500. Maybe it took him like maybe three months, one year to put those monies together. And by the time he got back there, it was three, five. So clearly inflation has affected the price. So inflation affects the prices of goods and services. That's why you have to invest in order to beat inflation. So you don't completely lose the value of your money. That's why investment is very key. Okay, so so you can you. beat inflation by investing, okay? Okay, so um, Chinere asked, what's the difference between mutual funds and money markets? Okay, thank you very much. I think we hear that a lot. Mutual funds and money markets. Okay, so money market is an instrument within that can be within a mutual fund portfolio. So mutual fund is a collective, I'm trying not to be too technical, is a collective investment, just like the way, the, just the way the name sounds, mutual. You have a mutual, um, mutual objective, right? So it's a collective investment scheme whereby different investors pull their funds together and then trust it into the hands of a fund manager that would now invest the funds on their behalf. Now, money market is just an instrument that the fund manager can invest in. Money market are those instruments, are those financial instruments that have maturities within one year, right? So mutual fund is a broad name, right, for a product, while the money markets are instruments that can be bought into the mutual fund. I hope I didn't get you confused. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Tolu. Um, we'll take just about three questions. I'm going to take um, questions that were sent in earlier. Um, so this question is from Osa. She asks, can purchase of cryptocurrency be regarded as an investment? Well, remember our definition of investment, you put your money aside to purchase assets with the goal that the assets will generate returns for you in the future is about your money. Now, cryptocurrency, we know that the risk is quite high, right? And we also remember when we talked about risk and reward, the higher the risk you're willing to take, the potential high return. And I stress the word potential. So um, if I'm going to advise, I, I, I probably would not be advising someone who is maybe in their 60 years and above, 50 years and above, who has worked, you know, um, who has done a lot of hard work in, in their youth to start investing in such right because the risk is quite high but a younger person may want to invest because if anything happens you still have um, so many years to go so you can work again and you know build up your portfolio okay thank you so much um this is the last question unfortunately because of our time um so um Adeswa is a student yeah. and she wants to know how she can invest um 10,000 to 30,000 naira for our audience that isn't in Nigeria that is about $21 to $60 in your currency so um for somebody that's a student that doesn't have a lot of money um, what investment options does she have? Adesua, you're yeah, in the right place. Talk to FSDH today. Uh, contact details are on the screen right now. You can, like I said, you can diversify. And it's a good thing you have USD. You mentioned you have USD. So if then your obligations also matter. You can retain your investments in USD. We have investment options in USD that would meet your need and that would cater for that amount of money you're talking about. So 
you can retain your currency in the USD, except you have obligations in Naira that you want to invest in. So you can now convert it to Naira. But if not, you can retain your currency in USD and you can invest in USD. Okay, thank you so much, Tolufa. Um, thank you for having me. Okay, everyone, if you would like to contact FSDH Asset Management after this session, the details are on the screen. Like you heard Tolu say, no matter where you are, if you have any questions, you can ask them and they'll be more than happy to answer. Um, we'll thank you so work much. With you. We'll be willing to work with you to achieve the financial uh, freedom that you desire, to have that financial security that you want for yourself in the future. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thanks to everyone for attending this session. Hope you learned a lot. Um, we'll be sending details um, FSDH management details later on for everyone who attended. Um, see you at our next session, hopefully. Um, everyone have a good evening and a good weekend. Thank you, Tolu. Thanks to all our participants. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.